Hey everybody, how's it going? Corey here from ThemeCo with a quick layout trick for you all to try in your next build. So this video is actually being done in response to a customer question about a layout they were trying to get working. And the pattern basically went like this. A row with two columns, some content to one side, and then an image in the other spanning the entire width of the screen. So the trick here is that they didn't want to just use a no container row. For example, I could click on this row, simply turn off the global container, remove my gap width, and I would have two perfectly 50-50 columns. However, if I do that, I would then have this text kind of floating in the center over here. And on a much larger screen, that text would continue to bump over as the screen gets much wider. Now, I think that's perfectly fine. And depending on what you're after, that might be exactly what you're looking for. However, for this user's particular use case, they wanted to keep these lines of these containers lining up all the way down the screen. So after I took a little look at it and messed with it for some time, I did decide that it needs just a, a little bit of custom CSS, which I'll walk you through now. And I think you'll see that it's actually not too crazy and it just leverages some of the stuff that the tool is already giving you while extending it just a little bit to get this certain look. So let's walk through it. We've basically got a media query here where we're saying min width 979 pixels. Now I'm getting this value because for this particular layout that I'm using, I've got two columns on my large and extra large breakpoints and it goes down to one on my medium breakpoint. So since I know this breakpoint starts at 979 pixels, I'm using that value here. So just keep that in mind. You might need to change that a little bit based on the particular layout you are using. Next, I just pick this class of widescreen, which I'm putting on my sections. And that is targeting any column inside the section and then any background element inside that column. So for those of you all who don't know, our advanced backgrounds that we use on our columns, rows, sections, it's actually a little bit of HTML and it's positioned absolutely in the top left corner of that element and then it fills up the width and height of that element. So this allows us to do some really cool stuff like parallax backgrounds and layer colors and images. However, since we're using this percentage width and it's relative to its parent container, we can never fully extend beyond that using just percentages. Now, the trick here is to use our viewport units. If you're not familiar with these, there's about four different viewport units that you can use to size things relatively to the viewport itself. So this VW unit is actually saying 50 equal units of the viewport's overall width at this screen size. And then what I'm using is this calc statement to subtract one rim. Now this one rim is coming because I've got a gap of two rims on my row here. And I'm just wanting to subtract the one half of that so that this isn't extending beyond the edge of the screen. So you don't need to do any overflow tricks, any messing about, but just keep in mind that you would need to adjust that based on the gap you're using for your row. Now, this final bit of CSS is really just in case we wanna flip this and use this image in the first column and the text over here. Because since our background element is positioned in the top left corner, that means that it will grow out to the right here. So we kind of have to reset that. And for these first columns, position it in the top right corner so that it grows out to the left. So basically all we have is this class of widescreen. And you can see that if I go to my section and my customize area here, I've put in widescreen. And if I take that out, you will see the normal row layout. We've got a row or two columns and they are constrained by the global container, but adding the widescreen class will have that image grow beyond the bounds of the global container. Similar thing here. I can go to my section, go to customize. If I take it out, the image is brought in, add it back, the image is pushed out. Now again, you could solve this by simply turning off your global container and then maybe using Flexbox on this column to center the text both vertically and horizontally. That would give you a very similar look 
totally native without any custom CSS. The one caveat to that is that as your screen grows larger, this text would continue to move out a little bit farther since there's no container keeping it in anymore. So this is just a really quick custom solution for a really cool look where we can keep the lines of our column moving down the page, but still have this image expand to fill everything up.